Hello grade 11s and welcome back to this topic on quantitative aspects of chemical change. In the previous lesson, we had a look at moles and gases. In today's lesson, we will investigate solutions and moles. Let us join Keke as she works through this lesson. Have a look at these two beakers I have on the mobile lab. They both contain salt water solutions. Can you see any difference between these solutions? Do you agree that both solutions are colorless, clear and of the same volume? The solute, sodium chloride, has clearly dissolved completely in the water, the solvent. Although you cannot see any difference between these samples of salt water, sight is not the only way I could check if they are the same, is it? If I taste them, I can definitely tell you that solution B is more salty than solution A. Can you think why there is a difference in the saltiness of these two solutions? That's right. Obviously, I used more salt to make solution B than I used to make solution A. When solution A was made, one gram of sodium chloride was dissolved in a volume of 100 centimeters cubed of water to make a solution. But when solution B was made, four grams of solute were dissolved in the same volume of water. If we looked at these solutions on a microscopic level, we would see that there are more sodium and chloride ions in solution B than in solution A. In solution A, the ions are quite far apart from each other, while they are packed closer together in solution B. To describe this arrangement of ions in a solvent, we can use two words, dilute and concentrated. When the ions formed from the solute are far apart, we say the solution is dilute. But when the ions are closer together, we say the solution is concentrated. Although these terms are useful, they do not give us a precise description of how dilute or concentrated a solution is. In order to describe this more precisely, we need to be able to calculate the concentration of a solution. There are two ways of expressing the concentration of a solution. One way is to measure the number of grams of solute, divide it by the volume of the solution, and express the concentration of the solution in grams per decimeter cubed. The second way is to work out the number of moles of solute, divide it by the volume of the solution, and express the concentration of the solution in moles per decimeter cubed. In this lesson, we will work with both these ways of calculating concentration as we investigate different solutions. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to prepare a solution of a known concentration accurately and apply the relationships between mass of solute, number of moles, volume of the solution, and concentration of solution to solve problems. Let's start our investigation of solutions by going to the lab. Hey there guys, I'm going to show you how to make a solution of sodium hydroxide of known concentration. Now to do that, I need to weigh out the mass of the solute. Now the first thing I need to do is to weigh out the mass of the empty watch glass. Make sure it's clean, there's no single dust grain on it. And I've got exactly 16.72 grams on it. Now remember, it's very important to always record your values. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is to now weigh out the mass of my solute, sodium hydroxide, very carefully. Now I need to get a total of 20.72 grams. There we go. Now the total mass here is 20.72, which means I have exactly 4,0 grams of my solute. Remember, always important to put it down. 2.72 grams, which means the difference is 4,0 grams of my solute. Right. Now next I need to transfer my solute into the flask. I'm going to need a funnel to do that. Go. Now remember to be very careful because you don't need a single grain of the solute 
falling out of here. Use my spatula to pull it all in. Now what I'm going to do is going to rinse my watch glass with distilled water to make sure that every single grain of the solid is inside here. You go and rinse the funnel as well. Good, good, good. Now I'm going to just pour a little more distilled water. There you go. Now what you need to do is to seal the flask. Now, when all the solute is completely dissolved, I'm going to add a little more distilled water. Now this flask contains exactly 100 centimeters cubed when the volume of the solution has reached this mark here. Now let's add the distilled water. Now let's go back to the studio and work out the concentration of this solution. I hope you noticed how careful Aaron was when making up his solution for sodium hydroxide. You should also make it a habit to work accurately when preparing for and conducting experiments. Now let's look at the data we have about Aaron's solution and try to work out the concentration. We know that the mass of the sodium hydroxide is 4,0 grams. We also know that the volume of the solution is 100 centimeters cubed. But before we start working out the concentration, we have to consider the units of volume that we're working with first. The unit of volume used by chemists is decimeter cubed. One decimeter cubed is exactly the same volume as one liter. You should remember that one centimeter cubed is equal to one milliliter. That means that 1,000 centimeters cubed equals 1,000 milliliters, which equals one liter. Now we're ready to start working out the concentration of Aaron solution in grams per decimeter cubed. For this solution, we know the mass of the solute, but the volume of the solution is in centimeters cubed we will need to convert the volume to decimeters cubed. Can you work this out? I'm sure you'll agree that to do the conversion, we have to divide 100 centimeters cubed of solution by 1,000. This gives us a volume equal to 0, 0,1 decimeters cubed. Now all that's left is to do the calculation. As we said earlier, we can find concentration by dividing the mass of solute by the volume of the solution. That is 4 grams divided by 0, 0,1 decimeter cubed. This gives us an answer of 40 grams per decimeter cubed written as g dot dm to the minus 3. But you should remember that this salt solution labeled solution B that I prepared earlier was also prepared using 4 grams of solute, that is sodium chloride. That means that it must also have a concentration of 40 grams per decimeter cubed. So if you express the concentration of the solution Aaron made in the lab and the solution I prepared as grams per decimeter cubed, it would seem that we are dealing with solutions of the same concentration. But is it really true? Is there another way of looking at it? Remember we said earlier that chemists used two ways of expressing the concentration of solutions. The second one here that includes the number of moles of solute present is called molar concentration. To calculate molar concentration, we divide the number of moles of solute by the volume of solution. The units for molar concentration are mole dot dm to the minus 3, or m, which stands for molar. To calculate molar concentration, we can use the equation C equals the number of moles of solute, n divided by the volume of solution, V. Where would we start if we wanted to calculate the molar concentration of our two solutions? By calculating the number of moles present in each of these solutes, of course. Here's the data to help you do this calculation. Let's check your answers. First, you needed to find the molar mass of sodium chloride. This is 
0.45 grams per mole. Then you should have calculated the number of moles by dividing the mass of sodium chloride by the molar mass. This gives an answer of 0.068 moles. Obviously, you would then do the exact same calculation for sodium hydroxide. The molar mass of sodium hydroxide is 40 grams per mole and the number of moles present is 0,1. Using this information, can you now calculate the molar concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution? Remember, we calculated the moles of solute as 0,1 mole and the volume of the solution as 0,1 decimeter cubed and we calculate the molar concentration using the formula C equals N divided by V. The solution has a molar concentration of 1,0 mole per decimeter cubed. We also call this a one molar solution. Using the same calculation, we find that the molar concentration of the sodium chloride solution is 0,68 molar. Isn't that interesting? It seems that our two solutions are not of equal concentration after all. Even though the solutes used had the same mass, the solution of sodium hydroxide will have more ions present in the same volume of solvent. More ions in the same space means that the ions are packed tighter together, which means that the solution is more concentrated than the sodium chloride solution. Looking at our calculations, I'm sure you'll agree that finding the molar concentration of a solution is a more accurate way of expressing concentration. And that's why molar concentration, or mole per decimeter cubed, is the SI unit for concentration. However, in industry, where large quantities of the same solution is made over and over, expressing concentration in grams per decimeter cubed is still useful because mass is easier to work with on a huge scale. Now, in chemistry, when you prepare a solution of known concentration like we just did, we say that we prepare a standard solution. This solution could be used to find the concentrations of other solutions if their concentrations are not known, or to make other solutions that are more dilute. Now, why don't we watch as Aaron and Dineo work through a typical exam question that you could be asked about diluting a standard solution. Hi, Dineo. Hi, Aaron. So, what's the question? The question says, make 50 centimeters cubed of a 0.25 molar solution of sodium hydroxide by mm -hmm. diluting a 1 molar solution. Okay. So, what do you think our first step is in this type of problem? I think we should find the number of moles required in the dilute solution. Okay. Now, you know what I think we should do? Let's try on the information that we've given to see if this can help us find the number of moles. Right? Okay. The volume of the dilute solution is 50 centimeters cubed. And the concentration is 0 0.25 moles per decimeter cubed. Now remember, the concentration C is equals to the number of moles of solute N divided by the volume of the solution V. Right? Right, but we can change the subject of the equation for us to find the number of moles. If I substitute the, our values into the equation, I get a concentration of 0 0.25 moles per decimeter cubed, and the volume is 50 centimeters cubed. Now, Dineo, can you see that the volume needs to be converted to decimeter cubed to cancel out the unit of molar concentration? No? Now we need to divide 50 centimeters cubed by 1,000 to give the volume in decimeter cubed. Okay. So we'll need 0 0.0125 moles of sodium hydroxide in a dilute solution. What will we find exactly the amount of sodium hydroxide we need? Well, we've got 
A, one molar solution. What we need to know is what volume of this solution will contain exactly 0.0125 moles of sodium hydroxide. Now, can you see how to calculate this? Can't we rearrange this equation to make volume the subject of the formula? Then volume equals the number of moles divided by concentration. This means we need 0, 0.0125 decimeters cubed. But the volumetric flask is in centimeters cubed. Yes, but we can convert our answer to centimeters cubed by multiplying the value by 1,000. This means that the volume required is exactly 12,5 centimeters cubed. Fantastic. Now for the fun part, let's actually make the dilute solution. Now to measure out exactly 12,5 centimeters cubed, we need to fill up this burette with a one molar solution of sodium hydroxide. Now I'm going to need my funnel there and pour my one molar solution in. Always make sure that your tap is tightly closed. What? Now what I need to do is to zero my burette. So I'm going to pour out a little and put it down back on to zero the mark. I'm now going to run out the exact volume of the solution, which is 12,5 centimeters cubed, into this 50 centimeters cubed volumetric flask, okay? Perfect, can you see that? Do you know, would you add distilled water? and make sure that the volume of the solution is exactly 50 centimeters cubed. Sure. And there we have it. A 0 0.25 molar solution of sodium hydroxide. Let us recap what we have learned in today's lesson. The concentration of a solution can be calculated using the equation C equals M over V. The unit for this concentration will be grams per decimeter cubed. The concentration of a solution can also be calculated using the equation C equals N over V. The unit for this concentration will be moles per decimeter cubed or capital M. This is the preferred method of calculating concentration. So that's the end of this lesson, grade 11s. Make sure to attempt the task video at the end of this series. You can also find more information on this topic at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Join me in the next lesson when we study moles and chemical reactions. Take care and goodbye.